Okay, so in this question, we are going to graph the function y equals 5 minus the square root of 3 minus 4x. Now, it's going to be difficult to do this at first because we haven't really looked at functions in this form. All the functions we have looked at have been in the form y equals a square root of bx minus h plus k. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange our function into this form. We know that our a in the original function is just negative 1. So we're going to have y is equal to negative. Let's set up our square root. Our bx right here will be this negative 4x that we had originally. Our h is going to be plus 3, which came from right here. And our k is plus k. We have a plus 5 sitting out front. Now from just this, we can find out a lot about our graph. From a being equal to negative 1, we know that our graph is going to be going in a downwards direction. From b being equal to negative 4, we know that it's going to be going in a left direction. So we know our graph is going, going down and to the left, so it's going to be something like that as far as the shape goes. But that doesn't tell us enough to really graph this graph accurately. So what we need to do at first is we need to graph and find a y-intercept. To find a y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So to simply do that, we're going to set y equal to negative square root of negative 4 times 0 plus 3 all plus 5. We know that the negative, negative 4 times 0 is just going to cancel out, so we're going to get the negative square root of 3 plus 5. And if we were to punch that into a calculator, our calculator would tell us that the negative square root of 3 plus 5 would be approximately 3.27 or so. So that would mean our y-intercept is the point 0, 3.27. Seven. I'm going to try to graph that on here if it will let me. We've got 3.27 or so. Somewhere right on there if you can see that. Now let's take a look and try to do our x-intercept. To have our x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0 this time. So we're going to have 0 is equal to the negative square root of negative 4x plus 3, all plus 5. Now we're going to try to solve for x. So the first thing we're going to do we subtract 5 from both sides, giving us negative 5 is equal to negative square root of negative 4x plus 3. Um, we see that we have a negative and a negative on each side, so if we were to divide them both by negative 1, these would just reduce to positive. So we're going to have a 5 is equal to the square root of negative 4x plus 3. Now to get rid of the square root sign, we have to square both sides. And it's very important to square both sides. Otherwise, uh, we won't be mathematically correct. So now we have 5 squared, which we know is equal to 25. And the square root of 4x, negative 4x plus 3, all squared, is just going to eliminate our square root sign and our square and give us 4x, negative 4x plus 3. Now we're still trying to solve for x, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, giving us 22 is equal to negative 4x. Let's try to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. We're going to have negative 22 over 4 is equal to x. Now we can know, know that that can reduce to negative 11 halves is equal to x. And we know that that is actually negative 5.5 for our graphing purposes. So we know that our x-intercept is negative 5.5 comma zero. It is that point and I will try to put it on the graph right there. I hope you can see it. Now we're going to take a look at our vertex because two points isn't quite enough for us to get a good enough graph. We need to know where this graph actually starts. So to find our vertex, the first thing we're going to do is set uh, what is inside of our square root equal to zero. So that is this part right here. So we're going to set negative 4x plus 3 equal to zero. And we are going to solve this for x. So to start, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, giving us negative 4x is equal to negative 3. Uh, now we're going to isolate our x by dividing both sides by negative 4, giving us x is equal to 3 quarters. Now to find our y value, we can simply plug in 3 quarters back into our original function. 
So let's try that. Y is equal to the negative square root of um, negative 4 times 3 quarters plus 3, all plus 5. Now we know that these 4s will reduce out, giving us y is equal to the negative square root of negative 3 plus 3, all plus 5. y is equal to the negative square root of 0, since negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0, and plus 5. So then we just know y is equal to 5, which, if we would have been thinking earlier, we could have found that that number, y equals 5, is actually just our k value. So our vertex point is going to be 3 quarters, comma 5. And if we don't know what 3 quarters is in decimal point, we can put it as 0.75, comma 5. And that would go somewhere around there on our graph. So knowing what we know from A being negative and meaning that we're going downwards, and knowing that B is negative and that we're going downwards, we can actually plot this on our graph. So we're going to start at our vertex. We're going to go downwards and hit our points. And we can just assume that this keeps going in a downwards to the left direction. Now the best way to double check to see if we are on the right track, if we made a mistake, um, is to try to graph this in GeoGebra to double check. So now when we pull this up in GeoGebra, we're going to take a look at where it starts, where it ends, uh, where it crosses the x-axis, the y-axis, we're going to take a look. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to input it in this bottom input bar, and I'm going to put in our original function, since that is what we actually started with. So y is equal to 5 minus the square root of 3 minus 4x. And I'm going to close my parentheses, otherwise this will not work. So I'm going to hit enter. Now if we take a look at this, we see that this starts at uh, 5 and, uh, or sorry, 3 quarters and 5, which we had here, which is perfect. We see that it crosses at about 3.27 uh, on our y-axis, and we see that it crosses the x-axis at about negative 5, 0, which is exactly what we wanted. So if we zoom right out, we will see that we were quite accurate in how we decided to graph this uh, radical function.